folks. I want to welcome everybody to our meeting today. Um, our, um, our next meeting date will be March 26th. We know we have um, an audit and finance schedule and possibly other committees if, uh, if it's warranted or if needed. Um, at this point, I need a, a motion to approve the minutes of the January 22nd meeting. Luella, first. Second. Joe. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, we're going to go right into um, our Chief Executive Officer's report. Brian, I know you have different things to talk about regarding everything from legislative service, etc. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, noted in my report, we've drawn down about almost $28 million of CARES Act. Um, our goal was to have all the CARES Act drawn down by the end of the fiscal year. Uh, that might be a challenge now, um, which is not an issue or a problem. It would just, uh, there, there is no deadline or time frame on that. Uh, so we could use it in the next fiscal year as well. Uh, as of the writing of this memo uh, last week, uh, we had 21 employees out. I believe now we're down to 18, <coughs> primarily uh, bus operators. Uh, and, and some of those, um, I, I would have to say, eight to 10 of those um, have been out since day one and, and have largely taken themselves out of work, um, you know, due to health conditions, underlying health, uh, concern about the virus. Um, uh, people Moving People, Transportation Coalition, Chris and I met virtually with them uh, on February 11th. Uh, this is a group of advocates for public transportation. <coughs> um, I thought it was a great conversation that uh, uh, revolved largely on I-81 and the impact that's going to have on, on transit and um, BRT, bus rapid transit. Uh, they wanted to know uh, some more information about that and where we stood and, and what's being done. When is the actual, is there a, a, a date in mind of when shovels in the ground for this project? For I-81? Yeah. It was supposed to be in 2022. I, I think because of the pandemic and their inability to hold the number of hearings they needed to hold and get final documents out, that, that might be pushed off now to 2023. Um, and keeping in mind, too, that the first probably two years of this project will have nothing to do with the actual viaduct itself, 81, it'll have, it'll, it'll be more focused on um, building additional on and off ramps off of 690, widening 481, wherever it's two lanes out to three lanes to handle the additional traffic that'll be pushed once 81 is no longer able to use. So that's, that's like the first two years of that project is going to be doing the, the, um, like the build up work so that once they tear 81 down, the infrastructure is there to handle that traffic overflow. And that, and that, you know, we and we service. We're in that that loop of construction. Yeah, um, you know, our service planning team has looked at a. It, it's not going to have a huge impact on our, our day to day service. Um, where it may have an impact is um, we've requested um, that the DOT put money in the budget for this project to include. Um, additional parking rides um, because it is going to disrupt a number of parking lots in downtown uh, so there'll be less parking spaces uh, for people to drive into work so um, they're considering adding suburban parking rides so that we can just run shuttle service downtown to the parking ride downtown parking ride downtown just going back and forth interesting uh, I joined uh, my counterparts throughout the state um, the other CEOs of the um, Authorities along the throughway. On uh, February 12th, uh, Assemblyman Magnarelli, as you know, is, is the uh, chairman of the New York State Transportation Committee on the Assembly side. Um, he, he joined us virtually for a, a discussion regarding um, STOA and bringing that back to the, um, at least to the enacted budget for 2021, um, which, as I shared earlier, will you know, amount to about a 10% cut so far. So we were asking for that 10% to be restored plus an additional 10% um, since the writing of this report. We've also gone on and had um, virtual meetings with um, Speaker Heastie, um, Senator Tomrey, and we've got uh, Senator Kaminsky, and then we've also got several more for um, 
and I got one this afternoon and then several more next week. Again, the ask is the same thing, that we're looking for a 50% increase in STOA over five years. <coughs> um, so we would ask that we're asking that it's uh, restored to the 2021 level plus 10%. Uh, they've all been very receptive. Um, the initial executive budget has our STOA budgeted at a 10%, almost 10% decrease for 2022, and that's what's in the budget that has been presented to you. There's a lot of questions still out there based on the federal appropriation to the states. There is. Um, today, the House is supposed to, uh, Cong U.S. Congress is supposed to vote on um, the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill, which includes $350 billion for um, states and local governments. Um, the number we've heard is that of that $350 billion, New York State would receive 12. Um, that will have a, a considerable impact on um, solar funding and whether or not it's restored to the, uh, the levels we're looking for. Uh, last, uh, I, uh, Steve Hagel is on the screen there. I'd like him to talk a minute about, um, uh, we received a CMAC grant a couple years back and we're starting to implement that and putting some additional <coughs> service on the street. And I want Steve to talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Uh, beginning Monday, we're going to operate a new bus route that's going to operate from the Central Transit Hub out James Street and through uh, the Moy Road corridor back near Northern Boulevard on a, route, on a road called Skyler Boulevard behind uh, UPS and along East Half Road that will uh, end at the Hancock Air Park where there are several manufacturing companies. Um, this is an area that, um, in transit terms, has been referred to as a transit desert. Just we have not had bus service in this area. In recent years, there has been uh, significant growth, specifically in uh, um, shift work uh, jobs, manufacturing and, and uh, delivery services and warehouses out there. We've received a lot of feedback from customers over the years that wish that we could provide service out there. Uh, we began discussions with Center State Steve and met with uh, some business owners and manufacturing groups in this neighborhood, in this area. Uh, they provided us with some shift times and we've been able to put together service thanks to the CMAC grant uh, where we can get people to jobs in these locations. So we will begin this service on Monday. It'll run a couple times in the morning, uh, some in the late afternoon and, and evening so we can provide service for first and second and to a degree third shift workers. We uh, think this is something that's uh, important for us to provide access to jobs for individuals. We'll also expand our call bus footprint. This will be call bus eligible service. And it will also allow us to provide call bus service to the Hancock Airport. So it's, it's, a, it's a good situation. It allows us to expand our service, something that we really uh, enjoy doing. Uh, and we begin it on uh, Monday. And we're hopeful that uh, this will be successful. I'd like to also uh, thank Assemblyman Sturpey um, for his role in, in helping us with this grant, and, and that's been a, a pet project of his um, to get service out to that, uh, as Steve said, that uh, transit desert, um, especially out to the, the air park. What about the new warehouse that's um, being built? What's the status of that service, et cetera? Um, the status of it is it's uh, still under construction. Um, it's, it's an impressive site if you haven't had an opportunity to drive by it. I, I suggest you should know you do that. Um, it's just an absolutely massive uh, structure. Um, Trammell Crow, who was the engineers on the project, uh, began working with us very early on in the process, uh, which was a, a refreshing note. Uh, quite typically, a lot of projects are built and then they contact us and say, can you give us service? Um, so we started uh, right off the Right, right at the start um, to ensure that we have service along Morgan Road, which we already did. Um, we worked with them on the you know, parking lot design and, and pull off so that we can get uh, the buses uh, either to the curb or in the parking lot to deliver workers. And, and we will have uh, several, um, several routes uh, going out that way every day. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting when you see that type of growth. Now, with the Cree, um, that massive construction going on in SUNY Poly's backyard. If they need it, that wouldn't be, have they reached out at all? They have not. 
that's pretty. That's like right behind the campus. So I know you have we have services up there. So hopefully yeah. that wouldn't be a big issue. That's going to be a, another uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs. But uh, uh, chip manufacturing. So we'll see what happens. That's good. Good for the area. Right? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Is the state group still working hard for advocacy right now, NIPTA? Uh, very much so. Um, you know, we meet frequently, um, probably more frequently in <coughs> during the pandemic than we did prior to that because then it was, you know, everybody driving to some location to meet. Uh, but now on a moment's notice, we can throw together a, a go-to meeting and uh, we meet quite often. Uh, I've actually got a meeting today at noon. Great. So, okay. Going to go right into our audit and finance uh, committee report. Um, I'm going to start out with the with our uh, financial report. Uh, Linda gave a, a very good overview of uh, multiple points with our uh, January numbers. Um, seem to be uh, in, a, in a decent place based upon um, the challenges that we face right now. Um, Lynn is always planning for the future, so I, I like some of the discussions that we have with that. Um, the uh, mortgage tax seems to um, be moving ahead. I only wish Steve Scherer can see these numbers. We'll wait to the end of March and then we'll send him this. Maybe, maybe we'll hand deliver it to him. You know, heard it. <laughs> he would. Oh, he would. Yeah. <laughs> All this money I never got. I know. Yeah, yeah it's, really, it's a nice number. Um, but uh, I think uh, Linda and Tim's team are managing the numbers very well and uh, keeping us abreast on what's going on. And I, I, I like the planning. I think that's uh, very good. With that being said, a motion was made to bring it to the full board for adoption. At this point, we need a, a motion. Luella, second. Robert, uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Um, Caitlin also brought forth a contractual amendment to Lamar and um, the original amount, um, Linda correct me if I'm wrong, was around $775,000. We're bringing that down to $450,000. Um, this is just a, a one-time amendment, um, what I believe, and at this point uh, a motion was made um, to bring this to the full board for approval, so I need a motion at this point. Luella, second. Robert, uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Jackie brought us up to date on the UPSEU pension benefit increase. Um, from what we understand by Jackie and company, the fund is um, in a good place. And we're looking to um, increase um, from 67.86 to 68.67 um, uh, for that fund, which is um, can uh, well enough afford it, and that was clear when I asked the question. At this point, a motion was made to bring it to the full board. I will need a motion. Joe, second. Robert, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, resolutions. Um, Linda brought forth a um, adding m and bank account for our health insurance reserve. We discussed this last month, the importance of allocating funds for a health insurance reserve. And once again, good planning. Um, we are in a self-insured insurance world here, health insurance sometimes. Well, we never know. We hope we don't see them. But catastrophic claims sometimes does put a burden on the original allocation in the budget. So it's nice to have that reserve. Hopefully we never need it. Um, and this is basically just cleaning up what we talked about last month month. So resolution WB, authorization to add M&T bank account. A motion was made to, the bring, to bring it to the board for approval. At this point I need a motion. Robert, second. Luella, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Caitlin um, spoke about the vehicle facility maintenance inventory software. Seemed to be um, quite involved this contract and um, you had a good team here I think that really dissected this a lot of people on this and um, 
the uh, recommendation was to award contract to accruent, okay, with a total price of uh, uh, a little bit over 255000 Motion was made to bring it to the full board for adoption. At this point, I need a motion for approval. Subject to review. Subject, subject to um, legal review. Okay, Luella, second, Robert. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Caitlin also brought forth resolution 3D. Resolution to authorize a public relations service contract. After um, his route came back, um, the recommendation is for Maurer for public relations for a five-year term, commencing May 1st through April 30th, 26. Uh, Maurer is the incumbent. A motion was made to uh, bring this for the full board for approval. This I'm noting for the record that our law firm represents. For the record, our, our, our law firm here is um, the law firm here represents um, them. And um, at, the, at this point, um, we're looking for uh, a motion to approve this, so I need a motion. Robert, second, Joe. Any questions? All in favor, aye. Okay, also Caitlin brought forward resolution 3E. Um, drug and Alcohol Testing Services for 2126. Um, contract to be awarded to DATCO Services for a five year contract. Um, motion was made to bring it to the full board approval. At this point, I need a motion. Robert. Second. Well, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Caitlin also uh, came forward. Um, Caitlin, you might get a little reprieve if you're out there for next month. You put your time in, so we'll give it to somebody else. <laughs> um, for unemployment claims um, administration services contract to award contract. It's, um, it's, a, it's a low amount, a very low annual contract, but as when you look at the multi-year, that's why it's coming in front of the board. And that um, contract award is Group Management Services, a five-year term. Motion was made to bring it for the full board for approval. At this point, I ask for a motion to adopt this. Luella, second, Joe. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay, uh, Tara and Steve were pretty um, diligently on this Syracuse City School Dist District Bus Tripper Service Contract Amendment. It's been uh, many months in the making. Um, I think you guys did a wonderful job with this. Motion was made to bring it to the full board. That's resolution number 3G. Motion was made to bring it to the full board to for approval. I need a motion at this time. Robert, second. Joe, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. At this point, I think um, this is probably one of the best part of the meeting, um, Brian. And um, it's a great honor. The next issue that we're going to talk about before we get back into our normal business, but I think this is, is what this is important to all of us right now. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to um, introduce to the board um, a great individual and also his wife, um, Robert Robert Sel Selaski. Yes. Okay. And um, and what is your Linda. name? Linda. Linda. Okay. Behind every great man is a great woman. <laughs> That's so what they say. I'd like to uh, share some comments from uh, from the board for your um, service that has been, words probably can't define what great service you did for this agency over your tenure. Thank you. He served the Syracuse community for 53 years. Bob started at the Syracuse Transit in December of 1967 in 
it's a big year for you. It was a big year for me. I was born that year. <laughs> so we got two things in common. And so we have a few people around here that weren't even thought of. So, um, but Bob, you and I will always be connected because we'll be connected. as you started your career, I started my life. Yeah. So um, that, that's, that's great. That's kind of starting your career. <laughs> you just didn't know it. Right. And we connected here, see, yes. after 53 years. Um, with the inception of the CNYRTA, Bob became a central employee working as a full-time bus operator until September of 2009. So at that point, you only had 42 years. You know, what's 42 years? That's, you got a lot more gas in the tank at that point. Um, Bob wasn't quite ready to say goodbye to Central back in 09, spending the next 11 years as a part-time bus driver. Yep. Um, on December 31st, 2020, um, Bob parked his bus for the last time. That's, and that's not easy. That's not easy, is it, Bob? No, it, 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 yeah, it was a letdown. You know, I was, I was kind of upset inside. My, uh, my father-in-law was a bus operator in uh, Utica. And um, I remember his last drive too. And I, I, he always said, a lot goes through your mind on that last yeah. run. Yeah. yeah. It was a great trip. Wow. And um, so everybody here, you know, I, I think the, um, the staff, the management, your colleagues, your family, um, you know, we, this does not happen that often. And I think with the future generations, Bob, it ain't gonna happen not going to happen so this is something that's it's kind of sad it is yeah. you, know, you know and that's why you're a remarkable individual because you gave your career to one place with loyal honor and integrity and everything that goes with that so please join me in congratulating Bob in his retirement effective January 21 on his 53 years of dedication to the Syracuse community and our <laughs> At this point, um, we'd like to uh, award you. Linda, come on up. You're just as important as this gentleman right here. Probably more. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't say anything. But um, in recognition of Robert's uh, service, thank you for your dedication and years of loyal service. 53 years from 1967 to 2021. Best wishes and congratulations on your retirement. God bless you, and this family loves you for everything you've done for us here. We'd like to say a few it's words. It's a great family. It's a great family. I love it. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, you know, it has its moments, but it's been great. It's been great. I love it here. Well, you're in our in our field here. I would say you're an icon. You're a hall of famer, and. Um, like I said, God bless you, and uh, we wish you the best. Thank you very much. Make sure you smile. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, enjoyed all the employees, too. All of my fellow drivers. We're all good. We've all done it over the years. My big, a great job. My big question is this. You drove bus in, in the 60s. And yeah. You both bus in the 2020s. Seven. Big difference in the vehicles. Um, we we had some power steering. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you great. know what? The, the, the flexibles were not power steering. They weren't that bad. They weren't that bad. And they and uh, they they drove well. The older buses they rode better. But uh, you know that's that's progress. Right. We, we have to take the good with the bad. We've had some battles. <laughs> you get out on the street and you go four or five blocks and it breaks down. And it, you know we've had some bad. Yeah. We had we had to take them out of service, but uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. So what are you going to do now? Especially the that, people. That's good to hear. What are you going to do now with this time? What do, you got? do you have a honey do list? Or what yes. Oh yeah. Nice? Yeah. She's got me busy. <laughs> <laughs> well. And I love it. Yeah. Good luck with everything. We'll miss you. Thank you, you left a lasting impression, a legacy here at this uh, this uh, transit agency. Okay. And if you want, you can put your arm around her. Oh, I can. Absolutely. Can I ask her first? Okay. Right, one, two, three. Perfect. Can't 
Let's make sure we get some pictures to them. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, thank you. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Linda, keep them busy. Oh, God, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can stay for the rest of the meet. Love to have you here. We're just about done. So. That was the one thing I think we were all looking forward to. Yeah, right? that was now the other part. stuff. You guys. So. I, I didn't even know this was coming. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. It was certainly worth it. Okay, continuing in this meeting, we're towards the tail end here. I'd like to... Um, and uh, Joe DeGray also spoke very highly of you as the, the head of the operations, spoke yeah. very highly of you, and I know he's out there in cyber world. And Joe, before you report, would you like to just say a, a couple words out of one of your for one of your operators here? Uh, absolutely, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bob has just been a, you know, uh, just completely dedicated to his job for the past 53 years. I've been glad to know him and honored to know him for the for my 29 years here and uh and you know when you get someone that comes to work every day and puts forth the effort that he puts forth every day it, it does make it a lot easier on everyone and uh and certainly to our our customers uh, which is most important to us so uh congratulations bob and i wish i was in the room but uh, congratulations all right thank you very good so um joe we're going to turn right into your report here since you're up on the big screen Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple updates uh, with Ops this month. Uh, recently, the board approved a Fairbox collection upgrade. Uh, we are looking into and in the process of installing an electronic fare uh, option, which will allow our customers not only to board faster and provide them uh, an easier way to board, but to uh, not have to deal with cash, which from our standpoint is nice. We don't have to count as much cash as we normally do. Uh, the system itself uh, is uh, in process of being uh, built. Uh, we are have a completion date of approximately July 15th, hopefully prior to the fair, if there is in fact a state fair this year. But more importantly, it's really going to affect our daily operator, our daily, excuse me, our daily customers. So ideally having this ready for September, October, uh, that we can roll this out fully to our customers is going to be a big deal. And as we uh, get closer to completion, we will set up a demonstration for the board and show you exactly how it works and, uh, and exactly what you pay for. So looking forward to that. Uh, personnel issues and our updates out in uh, Utica in our central of the night office. Uh, we have a couple of retirements coming up in May 1st of this year. Uh, Director of Operations Maria Zongrow and our Human Resource Administrator Marie Fricola are both retiring effective May 1st. Uh, both ladies uh, were with uh, Utica Transit Authority prior to the merge with us in 2005 and have been uh, instrumental in uh, helping us along the way since we uh, merged in, in the 05 uh, era. Uh, so we're going to be uh, missing them greatly, uh, certainly wishing them well on their retirements. Uh, one of the benefits that we have now uh, that was really in, in implemented a few years ago with Rick and Brian and some other folks is our succession planning. So this move, although it's, it seems drastic, we're losing a couple of long-term employees. Uh, we've uh, built up uh, the workforce there and the people that are taking over are already in place. And we're looking for a seamless transition to keep Utica uh, functioning uh, at the high level with us. So. Uh, that's my updates for this meeting. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joe, that was a great report. Keep us going. And, and those two individuals that Joe just mentioned, um, prior to my time here since 05, I spent years on the UTA board with those two individuals. Um, they were very good employees and um, really took their job seriously and um, um, were very loyal people to the transit industry. So, um, Joe passed my uh, words from the board on to them, and uh, so they enjoy their retirement. Okay, at this we point... We will, thank you. Okay, at this point, the um, governance committee reported I was a substitute for Darlene, so I don't look like Darlene, but um, I think Caitlin gave a, a, a great Susanna. overview. Susanna. Excuse me, Susanna. My, my apologies. Susanna did a 
a great overview today on the internal control program report. I think it's um, I think it's work that really not a lot of people get excited about. I see Susanna get excited about that. Maybe she should bring that excitement into business schools across the country that maybe the students will pay attention a little bit more during internal controls. But she did a great job on the annual review, the document control, the continuing education strategic plan, et cetera. She put together a very nice visual. I think visual things are easier to understand when you're talking internal control. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy board's very happy, Brian's very happy with the work that was done um, to make sure um, you need these in place because, you know, we're a state authority where audit, you hear the word audit, you hear the word compliance every time you turn around and it's only going to get worse in this world that we live in. So uh, Susanna, once again, a, a great, great report and um, at this point there's no action for the board but governance did do their due diligence today the governance committee to do that okay. well uh, also I'd like to say um, for the finance for the finance department I give a thumbs up and uh, I think they're doing a terrific job and um, it's almost like you can feel the difference like the different flow you know in the operation so it brings a sort of balance and a better understanding. So I really want to give a thumbs up to yeah. the finance department. Well, I'll stay, I'll stay there well. Very good. Does any of the board member have any other comments or questions before we wind this down? Brian, any other questions? Okay, Chris, I'm all set, thanks. Okay, let's um, stay safe and uh, we'll move for adjournment. Thank you.